All right. Hey, everybody. We're back with this week's lesson. And um, as I said, we are going to talk about Noah this week. Noah and the ark. Before we get started, um, we have a little activity that we want to do. So I'm going to give Nick this pencil. And I've drawn, close your eyes. I've drawn this little maze on this paper. You can open them. And he's going to start at the beginning. He's going to put his pencil mark at the beginning. And then he's going to have his eyes closed. And he's going to listen to me and the directions I give him to guide him through the maze and stay in between the lines. So we're going to see how this goes. All right. You got to close your eyes. Keep them closed. Now, I'm going to put your pencil at the beginning, okay? Put your hand on the pencil. Eyes closed? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let me hold it. Okay. All right. Go down. Down, 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 down. Stop. Go to the right. The right. That is the right. That way. I did. Keep going. You never no. said that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, keep going right. Keep going. Go, go, go. Oh, stop, stop. Now go down. Down, 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 down. Stop. <laughs> go to the left. Keep going. Going, going, going. Stop. Now go down. Down, 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 down. Oh, stop. Go <laughs> to the side. Go to the right side just a little bit. Straighten back up. What? The? Straighten your mark up. That oh, stop, stop. That doesn't make sense. Go straight down. No, stop. Now go to the right. Keep going. Keep going. Stop. Go back down a little bit. Okay, now keep going. Down? No, sh uh, to the right. <laughs> the paper is going to Stop, end. stop. Go down a little bit. A little bit more. A little bit more. Now keep going to the right. <laughs> okay, stop. Go straight down. Go not on my table. Get oh. back on the paper. <laughs> Where is the paper? Okay, right here. Go straight down. Straight down. Down. Down, down, down. <laughs> Down, down, stop. Go to the left. Over, 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 over. Stop. Go down. Over to the left. Go, 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 go. Go. D stop. Straight down. You did it. Okay. What? <laughs> so, this is what he did. You can't see it. Yes, you can. Well, a little bit. He followed my directions to make it through this maze. Now, how did it feel not knowing what you... You couldn't see what you were doing. How did that feel? It was weird. It was weird. Um, how did it feel depending completely on someone else to give you direction? Uh, it was hard. It is yes. hard. Because normally we would want to see what we're doing, have a plan, um, and be aware of what's going on. But... He had to trust me that I was giving him the right directions and telling him the right thing. So, as we talk about Noah's Ark today, we are going to be talking about being obedient to God, listening to his directions, uh, and doing what he asked us to do, just as Noah did when he built the Ark. Um, so, thank you, Nick, for joining us for this little activity. Oh, before you go, do you know anybody who needs an ark? No. Because I know a guy. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, as I said, today we are going to talk about Noah and the ark. Um, but a little bit from last week, um, we talked about how human evil was out of control. People were thinking evil, talking evil, acting evil, and it was everywhere. Um, all of the evil in the world was rampant, and 
had made God sad. And so he decided he was going to clean things up a bit and going to wipe everything from the earth. But there was one man who stood out to God, and his name was Noah. Noah was different, and God liked that. And so God tells Noah, these are my plans. I'm putting an end to my creation, to the people and the earth, and I will pass judgment. So this is where we start today. We're going to be in Genesis, which again is the first book of the Bible in the Old Testament. So turn to Genesis, and you'll go to chapter 6, and we are going to begin with verse 14. So if we look at verse 14, and we're going to read through 16, and it says, So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. And this is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. So, this ark was more like a big barge than a boat. It is not um, made for sailing or um, like a normal boat would. It is made to float. So let's talk about the size of the ark. Um, the length of the ark would be close to one and a half football fields put side by side. Or you could also think of it this way. You could take three space shuttles from NASA and line them up on the roof of the ark point to point um, and that would cover the roof. It was also as tall as a four-story building. So, um, we're, we're talking major, major barge, major boat here. So, when we read these verses, we read God's instructions. We hear, we read, make yourself, this is how you are to build it. Put a roof, put a door. We hear specific instructions from God to Noah on how everything is to be done. And at this point in time, God had not told Noah why he wanted him to build the ark. He told him that he was going to, um, you know, pass judgment on creation, wipe the earth clean, but he did not. Um, share with him how he was going to do this, when it was going to be done. Um, all Noah knew was that this was what he was asked to do. That he was just supposed to build a really big boat. He had instructions and he needed to follow. So think for a minute of all the questions that Noah could have asked. Um, why so big? Are you serious? Me and my whole family? Are you serious? Um, I have to build this thing all by myself. I can't hire someone to do it. Why a boat? Why this big? You've really chosen me to save and carry on the human race. <clears throat> so many things that I'm sure probably passed through Noah's mind, but he did it. He had the instructions from God, and we read that um, this was what God wanted him to do. So, let's move down to verses 17 and 18. It says, I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature, creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. So, y'all, it had never rained before. Noah did not know what it meant for flood waters, for water to come from the sky. He didn't know. But 
all he knew was God was telling him, this is what's going to happen. Um, you know, Noah didn't understand, but God's saying, look, I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to protect your family. I just need for you to trust me, and I need for you to be obedient. Well, if we move to um, verses 19 through 21, God then tells Noah, oh, you're going to need two of every kind of bird and animal, but they're going to come to you. Verse 20 specifically says, two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. Now, the animals are going to come to Noah. So what does that tell us? That tells us that God always has always will have complete control over his creation. Those animals are going to know to go to Noah to be put on that ark. And I think it's amazing to see God's power at work like that. Um, and we see in verse 21, oh, by the way, you're going to need to take enough food for you, your family, and the animals. So, you know, get ready. Um, Think of the undertaking, the job placed before Noah. I know how overwhelmed I get when I have two or three things going on at the same time or I have a big responsibility that I'm taking care of. Um, I think of our students right now with online school. I think of our teachers planning the lessons for the online school, our staff, administration, um, making sure everything is running smoothly. Um, all of those things can feel overwhelming. But God says, trust me. Trust me. Out of all these verses we've read today in chapter 6, um, we hear God's commands over and over. We hear his directions. We hear his commands to Noah. But we don't hear from Noah. We know what God's telling him, but we finally have a response from Noah in verse 22. It says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. He did it. Um, we never read of him complaining or grumbling. He just does it. Now, how many times in our lives are we asked to do something and the first thing out of our mouths is, well, why? Or well, we want to know the reasoning behind something, behind a job or a task. Or we want to know the outcome. Well, if I approach it this way, then the outcome could be this. Um, we have to have it planned out. And we, we, being human, want to feel like we have control. Or if we think, oh, well, this job doesn't sound too easy. It doesn't sound very fun. Um, it doesn't really sound like something I want to do. Noah did none of that. Does that task sound fun? No. It sounds so overwhelming that I wouldn't even know where to begin. <clears throat> and I'm sure Noah probably felt that way. He was human. But here's what we have to remember. Think last week um, to the illustration of the puzzle. God sees the entire puzzle put together. He sees what it will look like at the end. He knows where each and every piece needs to go. Um, what we see are a thousand little pieces laying everywhere. We're wondering how this piece is going to fit here. Where does this one go? Well, if I put this one here, then this one doesn't fit but my goodness, thank you, Jesus, that we don't have to figure it out. The puzzle is already put together. We just have to trust God and let him put the pieces in and fit them where they need to go. You know, we have to step out in faith sometimes. And we have to be obedient to God. And that's what helps our faith grow. It makes us stronger in our relationship with God is trusting Him and being obedient to Him. And you know, just like Noah, I, he didn't understand everything going on. 
I'm sure he had some questions, but he just, he did it. He was obedient. Um, God is protecting us just as he did Noah. He always has our best interest in mind. Um, when challenges come before us or situations just seem um, like they're going to knock us down, God knows what the outcome is. He knows that we're going to get through it. We just have to trust him and follow his directions. What if Noah hadn't listened? What if Noah had just said, oh, well, you know, that sounds like a great um, little thing to do in my spare time, but I think I'll pass. He would have died along with everyone else on the earth. But he chose obedience and he trusted God. So just as God gave Noah the ark to keep him and his family safe and to save them from the flood, he sent Jesus um, to us to save us from our sins. He's still protecting us. He's still keeping us safe. He's still watching over us. Um, and the circumstances in our lives can feel like floodwaters, um, feel like we're drowning. They're, you know, everybody has something different in their life that they're facing right now. But God is keeping us safe. And when you give your heart to Christ and you're a Christian, you're protected. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, watching over you, giving you peace, and just guiding your way. So, this week, think about that. Think about the times that we don't have control, but that we need to be obedient. Children obedient to their parents. Adults obedient to authority and those we work for. But most importantly, obedience to God. We may not understand. We may not know why he's calling us to do something. Just do it. All right. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the example of Noah. We thank you, Lord, for his obedience. But we thank you most for your faithfulness. Lord, you promised to protect Noah, to watch over him and his family, Lord. And I know that you will do the same for us. We thank you for Jesus, Lord, who came to earth and died for our sins. And Lord, through his resurrection, we have eternal life with you. Lord, he saves us from death, from sin. And Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the way that you watch over us and protect us. I pray, Lord, that each heart would desire obedience. Lord, that um, it would be just... Um, a, such a strong desire to do your will and to follow um, the direction that you lead each of us in, Lord, that we can't fight it. Oh, help us to have a heart, Lord, um, to just be with you and walk with you. Help us to trust you, even in the times that feel like flood waters washing over us, Lord. May we just stay close with you and stay in your steps. Lord, be with those who have not accepted Christ. And I pray, Lord, that you would just lay such a desire in them, such a longing in them, Lord, they could turn no longer. Thank you for your love and your care. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Come back next week, and we are going to see how everybody made it through the flood. All right. I'll see you later.